Today we're going to continue and look at new visualization of numerical data, which are your quantitative data. We're going to look at a frequency distribution. Just to give you a little bit background on how to build the frequency distribution table. Let's use an example of a manufacturer of insulations randomly selected the 20 winter days and records their daily high temperatures in degrees. So this manufacturer who went out there and collected all this, it was during winter, has 20 records. So we're going to take those 20 records of high temperatures and see if we can put them in a summary table because a frequency distribution is the summary table for numerical data. First of all, since we're working with numerical data, we know that when we get the data, we need to sort the data from lowest to highest in an ascending order. And this we can see that the lowest temperature was 12 and the highest temperature was 58. And let's start building the frequency table. The first step that you need to do to build the frequency table is to calculate the range. And the range is your highest value minus your lowest value. Our highest value is 58 and our lowest value was 12. So it's 58 minus 12 which gives us 46. Step number two, <clears throat> we need to select the number of classes. Usually five is the best, but it can go up to minim, uh, a maximum of 15 or even more. The reason why we go with five is to make sure that the graph looks neat and small. <clears throat> okay. And the next step, after you selected the number of classes, you can then de decide or oh, calculate how much class intervals. That means how big will be each category that you want to create. Those are the class intervals, how big they will be. And we do this by roughly calculate, taking the range and dividing it by the number of classes. And that will give us the class interval. Then the next step is to determine the class boundaries because if we already determined what our class interval will be, we will be looking at how big um, each class interval will be. So we can look at the boundaries. Where do we start and where does it end? And since we start with 12, and ends with 50 and we want to add only 10. So we can start somewhere by starting at 10 because 12 is our lowest. So we want to include 12 in our, low, in our class. So we can start by 10. And since our class intervals are 10, so we can add 10 to that and it will be 20. So we say, anything that is between 10 and not including 20 and less than 20. And we continue building. So from 20, we say 20 plus 10 will be 30, anything less than 30. And from 30 to anything less than 40, and from 40, anything less than 50. And because you can see that um, it ends with 58, and we said our class since this to be five, we already created four classes and the fifth class will also include the 58. So when we go to the fifth class, it will start from 50 and end at 60. Now we are ready to count how many of each of these individual values falls within each of these class intervals. And that will be the last step, to count the frequencies and assign them to the classes. So how do we do that? So we draw up a table, a summary table. I've already drawn up a summary table. I'll just show you how it looks, where it has the class intervals, which are the class boundaries that we created them, 
they create our class intervals. And then we have the column that is the frequency column. And that is where we use to count how many of those frequency values fall within this frequency. How do we do that? We say 10, but less than 20. So we're going to count how many of those values falls within 10, but does not also include 20. So how many? You can highlight them, can underline them. Only three of them, because then 21 is outside of, it's more than 20. So three of them falls within the class one. And class two, we also do, do the same. You can highlight it with a different pen. Let's use Yeno. Uh, it says it starts from 20, but it's less, up to less than 30. So it must not include 30. So that will be part of it, all of them. Until 27, they will be part of the second class boundary. And we repeat the, the, the same step until we get to the last class boundary, which was 50 to 60. So we, we're going to start where it's more than 50, which are those two but less than 60. So there are only two of them. And we can calculate the percentages, which is that column. The percentages, we calculate this column of percentages by saying, by adding all the frequency and calculating the total. And then from the total, we say, those frequencies, what is the percentage out of 20? So you say three divided by 20, will give us zero comma, zero comma one five. Sorry, my bad. So, uh, you say, three divided by 20 is, Zero comma zero comma one five, which is fifteen percent, and we repeat the same, 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 until you get to the to all of them by saying six divided by twenty, five divided by twenty, four divided by twenty, which will be twenty, two divided by twenty, which will be ten. If you add all the percentages, they should give you a hundred. To calculate the cumulative frequency, we add, we start with the first frequency that we have. So to calculate the cumulative frequency, at the beginning, we start with the three that we have because cumulative frequency is adding up, we adding up. So in the beginning, it will start with what it has because less than 20, there will be three of those. But those that are less than 30, everybody who is, or every temperature that was less than 30, there will be those two combined. Three plus six will give you the less than 30. If I want to know what is, uh, how, uh, what is the percentage of, or what is the number of days, how many number of days where, temper where temperature was less than 50. How many, how many temperatures, how many days the temperature was less than 50? And that will be those going up. So it means it's all of them. You're adding all of them. So there will be 18 days where temperature was less than 50. And that is how you use the frequency table. And also you can use the cumulative frequency, which we always also calculate the same way as we calculate the frequency table, uh, the percentages by saying three divided by 20, nine divided by 20, 14 divided by 20 will give you, 14 divided by 20 will give you 70. And how you interpret it 70% of the days were 
temperature was less than 40. And that's how you use the frequency distribution table. Let's look at when I have the frequency distribution table, what other types of visualization can I create? So when you have a frequency distribution table, you can create what we call a histogram. A histogram is another form of um, a visualization that looks exactly like a bar chart, but there are no gaps between the bars. You will see when we create one, the height of the bars will represent the frequencies or the count and the the bars will represent the class boundaries so how do we create one so let's say for example you remember our frequency distribution table it had uh, the frequency table and the percentage, your relative frequency are just the decimal of your percentages. Remember we calculated, we said it's 0 0.15, multiply by 100 gives you a 15%. So we can use the frequency, uh, the relative frequency. Now let's build a histogram. Building a histogram is easy because all these are our bars. Those will represent our bars. From a bar chart, remember a bar chart looks like this. So these are our bars. But because when one finishes, the other one starts, there should not be these gaps in between. The gaps are in existence. So how do we build it? We build it and it becomes like this. We say it starts from 10 till 15. So that is 10 until 15. Sorry. It starts from 10 until 20, and in the middle, it's a midpoint. That is why it has 15 there. Those are your midpoints. Uh, and from 20 to, to 30, from 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. And the bars will represent every relative frequency or the frequency or the percentage. And that is our histogram with no gaps in between. There are other forms of visualization we can build from a frequency distribution, and it's called a polygon. And a polygon is just, we're going to use a percentage polygon, which is formed by having a midpoint of each class represented data. In that class, then we then connect the sequence of the class at their respective class percentages. How do we then do that? Let's look at how we build it at the later stage. There is also another cumulative frequency polygon. So there is a difference between the two. The first one was a percentage polygon. It looks at the midpoints. But the cumulative frequency polygon, it uses the cumulative frequencies. So you will be able to see the graph grow. Whereas with the percentage polygon, it will be a bumpy. It will, the graph will look bumpy the same way as it take almost the same shape as your histogram. If I go back to the histogram, you can look at the histogram. This is the histogram. You can see that it looks bumpy. Then now let's look at how we built the polygon. So the cumulative uh, percentage polygon is also known as an OGIF. So how do we build this? So we need to have the class boundaries. We know all our class boundaries and we're going to use only the lower class boundaries to create this. And we can calculate the percentages of the lower class boundaries and how we do that. How do we build it? It will look somehow like that. This is what we call a cumulative polygon, percentage polygon, or what we call an OGIF, because you can see that the number increases because it accumulates. And that is your OGIF. And the last plot for visualizing numerical data, it's called the scatter plot. And a scatter plot is used to show the 
relationship between two values. When we come to correlation, we were going to repeat this and talk about it because then it relates more to the measures of relationships. And you will have your X values and your Y values and your X values and your Y values. And it shows the relationship between the volume per day and the cost per day. It's, if I look at this, it says, when the volume per day increases, the cost per day also increases because the graph looks like the points are increasing. And it shows the relationship between those two, the volume and the cost. Because when the volume is 23, the cost is 125. So if this is the volume 23, and 125. If the volume is 42, the cost is 170. If the volume is 42, the cost is 170.